Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Sacred Geography, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, May 21st, around 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2023. Mount Etna erupted in a big way, sending ash onto local villages and shutting down air travel. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. SpaceX saw a historic launch of astronauts to the space station, but let's get on with the weather. Severe storms with large hail and damaging winds threaten interior Northwest on Sunday. That was their fun day as large hail falls on Albuquerque during a severe storm. And we have video footage from the Dallas-Fort Worth area of massive hail and very dangerous hail. Take a look. I mean, you know, just north of me and then northeast of me, my gosh, I mean, just got pummeled. Wow. I want that you to take nasty. a look at this video right here. Uh, this is Stacy Hamilton wow. in, in Allen, wow. and uh, this is Sean Shawnee Boy uh, Hamilton's wife. Man. Look at that. And I had literally just, Sean was just here in the studio. He said, I'm eating Stacy for dinner. He said, should she leave? And I said, let me look at the radar. I said, no, tell her to stay home right now. You don't want to be out in that. And then look at these pictures. So thanks to Stacy for that. This also was in, uh, in Allen. Look at the hail, yeah. Man. my gosh, I mean, just crazy. And oh, here's wow. another one in Allen. Oh man, that's gonna mess up your car. No question, and now look at, now watch this. Ooh. Look at this here, another one in Allen. Look at it, it's like baseballs being thrown into the pool. Wow. Look how they're coming in from the right to the left. Absolutely amazing. Wow, and there we go. Wow. Here's, and yeah, here's some of the damage Clearly. right here. Here's, here's another, look at how the, the trees were uh, just shredded. Absolute shredder. shredder. Yeah, lots of damage, unfortunately. Just so sad. Just to, just another another issue to deal with uh, here tonight uh, in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, and North Texas. Uh, yeah, golf ball size or bigger. You know, with that picture there. Look at this. This is a Craig Ranch. So, yeah, all in the Allen area. So, fortunately, th well, fortunately, we're just unfortunately we're at the beginning of spring. Ding ding, and the hail season is just getting started. So more events like this, as we predicted uh, almost a decade ago, increased hail size. We've seen some of the largest hailstones in recorded history in the last decade in two locations. And well, we would be expecting even larger hail to be coming soon. Now here's the full forecast. Severe weather in the Northwest, Typhoon Mawar to impact the Marianas. Severe storms and locally heavy rain may impact portions of the interior Northwest. Storms with heavy rainfall and flooding are also possible in Florida and parts of the central Southern Rockies into the Southern Plains. Typhoon Mawar is forecast to bring heavy rain and flooding. Expected to make landfall at Cat 3, we'll get to that in just a moment, with damaging winds and high surf in eastern Micronesia, while headed towards Guam, apparently. Typhoon Mawar continues to track towards the Marianas. Here you can see landfall being predicted near the Guam region on Thursday, May 25th. Let's take a look at Zoom Earth. Looking at the storm in particular, you see how it took a little hook here, and it is now moving in a direct path towards the northern region of the island of Guam. With winds Tuesday at noon expected to be at 110 miles per hour and by Wednesday, 24 hours later at 120. So it will pass over Guam at about 114, 113 miles per hour sustained winds. And that's going to bring it up into Cat 3 in the Saffir Simpson scale of hurricane winds in the devastating category. So all thoughts and prayers go out to Guam as they prepare for a devastating storm, a war to make... Landfall potentially, this track could change, so stay tuned for updates, as it will rafe the northern section of the island, which is bad news. Heaviest winds are typically in the southern region here of the storm. So we're going to be keeping a close eye on this as it's expected to make landfall on Guam at Cat 3 sometime Tuesday evening. As we come over to look at the U.S., we can see sustained moisture in the west here on the Rocky Mountain front. Day after day, a monsoonal pattern exploding every afternoon, one day after the other. It's nonstop. So we're going to be quite west, quite wet in Colorado over the coming days, weeks, and months. And the snow will continue to fall through June in the high mountains of Colorado, as well as some of the high elevations of Wyoming, and a huge event here in Alberta and B.C. coming 
Tuesday through Wednesday, which is going to bring precipitation up to the fires, which is good news because it's going to be putting out these 23 fires right here on the map. 11 up here, 7 down there, and all the moisture is coming right in this region. So that's good news. Here is the three-day smoke forecast, and we're talking Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And the smoke will dissipate on the East Coast by Tuesday. Just some lingering effects as another plume moves down into the center of the country by midweek. What a tweak. But by that time, the fires will be out and the smoke forecast will be dim. Now, downpours in Auckland with thousands of lightning strikes. We predicted an increase in lightning in its strength and its veracity. And here we have confirmation of that with high winds and hail to come. Auckland woke up to downpours on Monday, which is not even Monday here yet, but I do digress. And the North Island is in for more heavy rain, thunderstorms, and high winds. Already in the 24 hours to 10 a.m., 8,850 lightning strikes in total have been recorded in Atereo and the Tasman Sea, mostly over the water, thankfully. Take a look at this map. It's absolutely unimaginable, this amount of lightning strikes. Now, most of those didn't happen over New Zealand, but holy mackerelly, what if that did? Stay indoors. Seismic update. There are some major quakes of note. We had a 5.5, 108 kilometers west of Petrolia, California, in that danger zone there. Yeah, the fracture zone. We do have a cacophony of quakes here in California, Nevada border region, which is right on a fault zone. Major fault zone there, so nothing out of the ordinary there. And worldwide overall, the largest quakes, we had a 6.1 in the Solomon Islands and a 6.5, 6.8 in Prince Edward Island as the mid-ocean ridges spread. Multiple events on mid-ocean ridges. Macquarie Island, several quakes and aftershocks on the Prince Edward Island region. Heads up, the earth is growing. Mount Edna volcano erupts, raining ash on Catania, forcing the shutdown of the local airport and making for spectacular photography. Now, the problem is that most people who have been filming this mountain stopped filming it months ago when the eruption stopped. But the activity continues. Let's take a look at the explosion that occurred just a few hours ago. see the huge blast sent a huge ash cloud to the stratosphere we have the satellite images from this now and as you can see it was a spreading to uh, mainly toward the Mediterranean we're going to turn this audio off because it did not go into the stratosphere it in fact went into the atmosphere <laughs> it was a very low level eruption maybe barely 10,000 feet but you can see that plume moving there and over the cities um, that were affected during the blast. So I don't recommend you to subscribe to this channel, but we will use the footage. Nonetheless, Etna Volcano, here is the eruptive history. It erupts for between VEI 1 and 3 pretty regularly, going all the way back as early as records have been kept there, which go all, well, they go way back. But the earliest records of confirmed eruptions go back to about 1350. And that is pretty insane. Uh, there's going to be no major eruptive event except for potentially a VEI-3 event, which will affect the local communities here on the flank of the mountain, which is bad news for the people living in the shadow of Etna. But they knew this when they moved there. And it is boom time, and it's spectacular. So they do enjoy it. Now, people living around Yellowstone won't enjoy the next eruption, I assure you. Yellowstone volcano super eruptions appear to have multiple explosive events. The last caldera, caldera forming eruption at Yellowstone was the most recent eruption. It was more complex than previously thought, according to the annual report about the activity at the super volcano. Now, according to the USGS, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory 2022 annual report published on May 4th, Field work over the past year has provided new geologic evidence that the formation of Yellowstone caldera was much more complex than previously thought. A caldera is a large crater that forms 
after the collapse of a volcano following a massive eruption with huge amounts of lava, which form a void in the earth, and then the crust collapses down into the hole. Now, Yellowstone is one of the biggest volcanic systems on Earth. It sits above one of the Earth's hot spots, which may be connected all the way to the core. It has produced three caldera-forming eruptions in the past three million years. Now, only two of these are super eruptions. Now, the eruptions chronologically are the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff eruption back 2.1 million years ago, the Mesa Falls eruption 1.3 million years ago, and the Lava Creek eruption, the most recent super eruption from Yellowstone 631,000 years ago. Now, the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff and Lava Creek events are considered super eruptions because they expelled over 240 cubic miles of material. That's insane. That's 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma. The later, the latter was responsible for the formation of the Yellowstone Caldera and the most recent eruption, the Mesa Falls. No, the Lava Creek. That's the most recent eruption is the Lava Creek 631,000 years ago. The Mesa Falls eruption in between the two was not as significant. Only 67 cubic miles or 280 cubic kilometers of material were ejected, and that does not put it into the supervolcano realm. Maybe VEI-7, but I do digress. So the next boom from Yellowstone is not due anytime soon, but will be catastrophic nonetheless. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Etna exploded. We know that. No other quakes of note. Space weather news, the sun is quieting down while major spots are facing Earth. You can see multiple sunspot groups all turning in for the next 7 to 10 days will be Earth-facing. And, well, guess what? Yeah, Earth-facing quiet has kicked in, and we're down to the C1 range in X-ray flares. The only thing we have to worry about as far as geomagnetic activity is Corona Hole 6, which will be coupling with us in 24 to 36 hours, bring us up to KP5 or 6, potentially, with the addition of a glancing blow of a CME. Hello. Look up. There could be aurora tonight. Here we are over at the WSA Enlil Spiral showing that small glancing blow of the coronal mass ejection that may be clipping us in just the next few hours Let's take a look at telemetry to see, and here's the coronal hole stream coming. No one's bumming. It could be Aurora night. Here we are over at Discover Solar Wind, taking a look at telemetry, and we can see that the phi angle began shifting about six or eight hours ago. Density moved up, and the speed, plasma speed, is now rising towards 600 kilometers per second, putting us in a position to reach geomagnetic storm quite easily. So stay tuned for the boom. KP has reached six in multiple uh, locations, including the estimated planetary K index and Friedrichsberg, as well as College Station earlier today, bringing KP index gradually up to 5.5 and 6, where the Aurora watch is now, well, quite evident in Canada. This might kick up another notch in the coming hours, so make sure well, as the sun sets, you get out and look up, especially our friends over in Michigan. Where are we? Yeah, let's take a look over at SDO, where we witnessed um, a solar tornado earlier today, and we published it up at Magnetic Reversal News. It's a pretty fantastic solar tornado that's going to be coming around the limb here. And we were able, boom, did you see the moon just go there? <laughs> There it is, developing. Take a look at that. Spectacular, multiple tornadoes coming around the limb from that active region. We'll look at it one more time for your fascination. Keep an eye up here as two tornadoes develop right after the passing of the moon. That's a moon boom, tornado double boom, From thanks to SDO. They look like little creepy aliens or something up there. Now, if you didn't know, let's pause this. Give us a little bandwidth. SpaceX launched the Axiom Space AX2 crew to space earlier today. It was a successful mission. I was worried the whole time. It's weird when I watch these countdowns. 
and they had one of the most storied female astronauts in American history as the captain of the ship, as well as two brand new. All the astronauts other than the captain were newbies to space, and two of them were from, I believe, Saudi Arabia. It was an amazing launch, and they're headed to the space station for 10 days, and we will also bring you footage of the touchdown and other stuff going up on space. But let's watch the launch because it's fantastic, shall we? T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power. And lift off Falcon 9. Go Axiom. Go Axiom. Copy one alpha. Together we expand what is possible in low Earth orbit. Add Astra and Godspeed AX2. T plus 36 seconds, 36 seconds into flight. A great view of Falcon 9 heading to space. Power and telemetry is nominal. A Stage great one call throttle down. Power and telemetry nominal. We're into the throttle bucket. Is the first stage is throttle down power on the Merlin. We're engines. into the in throttle bucket. Yeah, so all of the crew is alive and well. It was a great launch. Um, the detachments were all quite successful. There's the crew. In the module, four astronauts headed to the space station. Here is the captain, that female in question. The pilot happens to be like a stuntman. This is a private uh, launch of astronauts into space, all private astronauts. These are not like government officials from NASA or NOAA. Elon Musk probably knows them all well. Look at how hot the engine is. This is just a fantastic... Um, Feet by an independent group of scientists that are not controlled by our government. And in fact, our government is now hiring these groups to bring up astronauts into space. And it's a disgrace uh, how our government, this is the same team that's going to bring astronauts to the moon. It's not NASA. It's Axiom and the SpaceX rocket program. Isn't that weird? Yeah, leave your comments below if you think there is something a little fishy about all that. Now, David Dilley uh, just did a video over on Tom Nelson's podcast. You should all watch it. It has over 100,000 views now. He uh, has this blog here, May 21st, signals that global cooling is beginning. So take a look. The video is down below here, and you'll get links to all of this, where he explains the Milankovitch cyclicity and a little bit of his own theories all of which I support. Natural climate variability and solar cycles and climate cycles are the norm. Anthropogenic warming is a fraud, period. Now, California officials are investigating the loss of 30 tons of ammonium nitrate. In case you don't know what that is, it can be used as a fertilizer, but more often if you mix it with diesel fuel can be used as an explosive, as was used in the Oklahoma City bombing of the federal building. You remember Timothy McVeigh back then, decades ago? Yeah. Well, now 30 tons of ammonium nitrate have gone missing. And so stay tuned for the next boom. Provided to you by the CIA, probably. Now, the crowd size for Brittany Griner's WNBA return baffles the coach. How was it not a sellout? Well, how, how about that this chick is a dude and He's a sellout. He hated America before he got locked up in Russia and literally stood for the national anthem on his return. Now look at this completely inept douchebag who's not a woman. Um, but... I mean, it was, it was great, but like, honestly, come on, LA. Like, we didn't sell out the arena for BG. Like, I expected more, you know, to be honest, right? Like, it was great, it was loud, but um, how, was, how was it not a sellout? How, the arena for BG? Like, 
No one even knows who BG is. Maybe if you said her name, a couple people would know that it was the dude that got arrested for smuggling hash oil into Russia. But no one knows who BG is. No one knows who the WNBA is. And why is it run by a bunch of women that are dudes? I mean, this, and nobody goes to see them? <laughs> Duh. You want to see some real uh, good information, something that has societal impact, scientific importance, not any of, the, any of the gobbledygook that's being shoved down your throat by the woke tards that control the media. This is all information that has no purpose in your life. How about you learn something that matters, like who the Estistinum were? Yeah, they're the ancient ones. And archaeologists have to call them Anasazi for decades, pissing off the natives. Yeah, Anasazi means ancient enemies, and only the Hopi ever called them that. This is how stupid science is, how stupid archaeologists are, and how in culturally inappropriate science is in general. You want to get woke? Why don't you start calling these cultures what their actual name is and wake up? Whew. Holy macaroni. Check out this old VHS tape that was found in a closet about the ancient ones, the Istastinum. And we'll have more coming up on Magnetic Reversal News on the topic. And that's a boom to knowledge. As we, well, for the last eight years have been investigating the sites of the Anastaman, we will bring you more information on the ancient ones. Subscribe to the channel. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. The most important thing you can do is share this video as we are shadow banned in the algorithm from unsubscribed people. And we need your help to grow. Be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. We may be in Creed tomorrow. Check out the live stream. Yeah.